Okay, so about those clicky switches. This is what would be in an arcade game on both the joystick and the buttons. So I was thinking we could use are these small micro switches. Nano switches, perhaps? I'll just draw these up in the computer and then I will uh, figure out the best way to arrange them so that the point of contact between the switches... Oh, I guess I already figured it out. So I've got Adobe Illustrator here which is where I like to start. I drew in the main circuit board and also a side view of it. So this wall here will give us enough thickness for a size two imperial screw, which I like to use. So uh, basically I just start adding in things like the micro switches that we were looking at earlier. And we have a few um, surface mount uh, tack switches here, select and start, A, B, C, D. So from here, we can start building up detail. So here's what I came up with for the design. So like the arcade machines, we've got a red and white and black color scheme, which is what everyone remembers because nobody had the AES. Everyone saw this in the arcade, the MVS, and this is how they looked. Garish, yes. Recognizable, also yes. This represents the center of one's thumb. So this point here, that's the... Um, the main joint where your thumb connects to your hand. And then this inner arc here represents the, um, the arc when my thumb moves back and forth, at least my thumb. I'm being biased since I'm the one designing it. Uh, yeah, so I lined up the buttons in such a way that they uh, fit the arc of a human thumb. So they'll be comfortable. So this is where the LCD fits. And then these three points here are where we connect the controls. And I'm going to actually make this case in three pieces, not just two, uh, for reasons you'll see later on. Then we have the front holes in LCD. So this is our joystick aperture. And then our buttons, control mounts, our micro switches, the support posts, the rear strain relief. And then these uh, rectangles are guides as to where to attach the uh, tack switches, which we'll do manually. And then finally, since we're not Apple, a headphone jack. So the control mount, this is what's going to hold the switches. I didn't draw the switches into here because it's kind of pointless, but you can see the switches with the little holes will just basically slide onto these shafts and be supported by the strain reliefs. The print is done. Let's test it out. It's fitting pretty well. Cool. Now we'll have something like this printed up for the inner shaft. Oh yeah. Clicky switches are is not that hard to make. So this control mount here, this was actually up a little bit and then I moved it back down where it needed to be. So then now when you look at it from the side, you'll see that the riser posts here made up to the LCD right there. All right, let's see how this goes together. Now, the reason I did this in two pieces is because once we glue on the front decorative plate to our LCD riser, uh, there'll be no way to get the, get it switches, and I only build things that we can take apart. So basically, this is like this. The LCD goes right there. So yeah, let's take a look at this. Let's go back over into Illustrator, where I did all my depth, my, my depth perception. Actually, let's go down. That'll make the uh, movement math a little easier later on. Not like it's that hard of math anyway. We can actually also draw the PCB if we want. Not that it's super necessary. So the thing we need to actually do here is see how the PCB is floating inside of this shape? Well, it needs some mount points. So a, a few of these spots we need to actually bridge over the plastic so we have something for the PCB to rest on. And we can use some of the existing PCB holes as a place to mount screws to hold the PCB in place. We could just hold it in place with other components or double-sided tape, but you know, a few screws aren't a bad idea. All right, the part is done printing. Not super thrilled with the quality, but I might just, just reprint it. Anyway, here's our PCB. Fits in like that. Good. Here's our control board, this fits right there. You can see we've got a little bit of a gap tolerance for it. The 3D printer is accurate. What's inaccurate is usually the plastic, the way it extrudes. Okay, there's that piece. 
and the LCD fits right here. Cool. So I'm going to do an offset coming in point one, and that will be the center point of my uh, size two screws on top of that. So the out, the outer circle here, that's the um, that's the cavity. That's the point two inch cavity. And again, the sc screw head is point one six seven, so it'll fit within the cavity. And you want to make sure you have a little bit of meat left on the plastic, otherwise you'll see through it. We'll just leave it here. So I'm going to basically go through both layers. Printing some buttons with some red and blue filament. Akerbot's been through a lot, but it can still do some nice prints. I've got both of my printers printing things, so in the meantime I'm going to try to figure out this control pad. Some of it's pretty straightforward, like the buttons, but the potentiometers aren't completely straightforward. You know, there's a known ground, but these pins aren't going to ground. They're going into a little resistor. But then the resistor goes to ground. Yeah, so we just need to see what value that resistor is. 10K. Interesting. 10K. All right. So I guess we can kind of draw that up as a little bit of a schematic. So that's uh, a little unusual. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the uh, rest of it. The sense pins. Those should, or hopefully should, just go to one of our header pins here. So let's go to vertical sense, go back to BP mode, see if it beeps out. Yep. I'm going to take a look at this potentiometer here. So if you measure both sides of it, it'll give you the total value. 8.9K, so yeah, 9K pot. Come on, they're always 10. They're always 10. What was I thinking? Uh, so what we'll do is we'll wire up those micro switches in a way that basically simulate this circuit. So instead of having an analog value from like, you know, 5K to 10K or 0K, we'll just go hard over in one direction. So what I'll probably do is I'll take the horizontal and vertical sense pots and hook them up to the up and down and left and right switches. And so then depending on which switch is closed, it will send the H or V value either towards VCC or towards the ground. And then I'll include the resistors as well to make sure the values are correct. Still need to design the back of the unit. So we're going to take basically this whole thing and extrude it out. All right, so here's the extruded back portion. I've dropped it down to the correct level. And we have some uh, nice little holes here so we can hear the sound. So what I'm gonna do next is uh, 3D print this and then we can basically start installing the uh, power supply stuff and use that to build up the system and get this thing running. Okay, I have the case pieces all printed. Here's the back and the fronts. So here's the Neo Geo board, and this is basically like a book. Like this is how it's gonna fold together. So I need to think about the position of things. Here's the power input for the Neo Geo. So I've gotta think about the best way to attach this to that. And I think what I'm going to do is have a disconnect, basically so I can disconnect the power side of it entirely for when I need to do wiring here. Battery's going to go right here. So a lot of people have been asking me, what are you doing now that you're not doing the show? I've been, I kind of went back to just doing uh, contract prototyping like I did before the show. So I've been doing loads and loads of accessibility controllers for people. So I started doing those back in 2008, I think it was. No, 2006. Yes. Way back then. And I'm um, still doing them. There was a, a time where Felix was doing them, but he got a little overwhelmed, so now I'm doing them again. Okay, I'm gonna use this header for the power disconnect. So I'm just gonna stick the header into it. Oh, look at how well that breaks. Amazing. All right, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna grab this guy here. Yeah. 
and make sure this is no longer than it needs to be. So notice how I've tinned both items. So now I'm just gonna lay these together and bada boom bada bing, there we go. It's wired a little thicker but it'll be fine. You want a nice little ball of solder. You don't want uh, any uh, whiskers floating around. Hey, what about that missing capacitor? Well, I'm just going to put one sideways. And I'll use the gap left behind by the headphone jack. Looks like everything fits, so I shall proceed. Oh, maybe it's time for a, uh, a shop story. I can tell you how I discovered the music genre known as Yacht Rock, sometimes called Dad Rock. So we were at the shop one day, and Karen wasn't there, and I asked Alexa to play music Karen didn't like. That's exactly what I said. And Alexa starts playing the Yacht Rock uh, playlist. First I was surprised that she played anything at all. But then, like, I don't know, about a month later, I, I saw, I think it was Harmonix, talking about how Rock Band had a new uh, Yacht Rock <laughs> um, track pack. And I was like, wait a minute, this is a genre? I always keep the leads from uh, components, put them into a little cup, because I can use them for things like this. So, we need to hook up the speakers. If you look, there's actually a little test pads as well. So we could use that or the original speaker vias. So I've got this uh, thin strand wire here. Yeah, so even though there's vias here, I'm not going to bother pushing the wire through the via. I'm just going to tap it down like that. So, so this is solid strand, so if you bend it a little bit, it will have memory. Trying to make sure my hand doesn't get in the way of the camera. Even when you have someone film you like Max did or Allison, uh, it can be tricky. Like this right here, I don't know if the camera can see it. I think it can. All right, let's take a look at the components. So we have LiPo battery, Adafruit Power Boost 1000 charger, a little header here that our speakers are connected to. The matching plug for the main board, power plug for the main board, and the enable switch to activate the power boost circuit. I've got it charging up a bit. Okay, I screwed the control plate to the front LCD plate so I could wire the controls in the way that they will be assembled. So it's kind of like, it is like a book. So you got this piece, it's going to go like that, and then this thing will plop onto the bottom portion. These wires are so small. I think I have an idea here that might work. So we'll bring the ribbon cable here, and then when you open it, it will be like that. Oh, a little too short. Although that's probably not a big deal. We could just wire it like that. We fold down. Yeah, and the wire doesn't fold upon itself. Yeah, I think that'll work. Um, 10K to ground on right and down. So I think I'm just going to use these resistors. They're kind of big, but they'll fit. There we go. Not the best solder job, but it'll work. So now I can just attach the other side of the resistor to any one of these ground points. And then my schematic, I have 5K on either side, but I think I'm going to switch to 10. And I think I can get away with that because uh, even if it's 10-10, at the default position, it'll still be centered in the ADC range. But if it's 10 here and 10 here, then when you close the switch, you're going to be closer to the resulting voltage when you move the analog stick. Oh yeah, nothing like some intricate wiring to start your day. The, you know, for the buttons themselves. I have to make sure I leave enough room around the tack switches for the buttons. So this is probably okay, but I don't want to push it much further than that. Expose a little bit of wire, like that. 
hit it with the iron and it should contract around it. There we go. Oh boy, there's the completed circuit. What a mess. Then you... Oh yeah! We tricked it! <laughs> Well, according to Fusion 360, this is what it's going to look like. So yeah, uh, let's see how close we get. As for the buttons, I'll probably just print them in white and then spray paint them the specific colors because I know I don't have yellow or green filament. Time to test the clicky sticks. So I have this black disc here with a screw going through it. And the bottom I have this fairly detailed 3D printed part. I actually made this out of ABS on the old MakerBot. Basically this should slide around inside the sticks and make clicky. Oh yes, clicky sticks. Cool, all right, well now I can continue wiring the buttons and we can finish this thing up. I think I can go ahead and put in the LCD screen. Feeds like a glove. Okay, got all the fine pitch soldering done here. Not too horribly difficult. So just like with the D-pad, I'm gonna figure out the best way to bend this thing. Yeah, so it's not just, yeah, not just the wires, but how you have to bend the wires. Definitely something you need to take into account. Gives a little bit of hot glue, just a temporary, just a temporary set. Oh, the fire, it's burning, it's a fire sale. What I think I'll do next is I'll actually flail this wire out. So instead of going over like this, I'll actually flail this wire out like that and then go down to connect to the buttons. Oh boy, this isn't confusing at all. Let's see. Got select and start wired up. So the next one is C. Yeah, A, B, C. Okay, I remember, I remember the alphabet, so that's good. Remember, using heat to strip wires is definitely a hack, but it can work as long as you know that the wire is properly exposed because sometimes you might solder it in place and think that oh it's good but then all you've really done is kind of like melt the wire to something else so it might stay in place because something's melted not because it's actually soldered see I'm using my fingers as extra hands that should be good okay so before we do final assembly I'll show you the main components this is the front half of the case with the LCD the spacing is so tight, I couldn't even use hot glue to hold the LCD in place. I have some double-sided tape. The back of the unit, which is basically power and speakers. And the middle portion, which has the controls and the main motherboard. All right, let's put this together. Yeesh, this is one tight sandwich. Oh my gosh. You know, it might actually make more sense to run the headphone jack on this side of the board, because there's a little bit of space. So you just gotta go right there to there. I mean, we might pick up some noise from the power, but we should be all right. This is getting ridiculous. But I am getting to that point where it's like, oh man, I can't stop. I'm so close. So I wired up the headphone jack, not really in any rhyme or reason way, just uh, what was more convenient. So I'm gonna mark the orientation of the wire and then, uh, Take a photo and then move on to the next thing. This will simply, yeah, simply snake up through here. Oh yeah, not a problem. It's a Neo Geo sandwich. Mmm, tasty. Get this last screw here. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's take a look. Oh, there it is. Beauty, a mini Neo Geo. Yeah, see? Hey, it works with a human thumb. Oh, clicky, clicky. Uh, yeah, and so uh, it's, it's pretty small, actually, in the XY. Like, here's 
it next to a can of soda. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, pretty compact. Definitely more compact than how it came. Hey, let's check the stats. All right, 7.2 ounces, height four and three quarters, width three and a half, thickness one inch. I would have liked it to be a little thinner, but the battery took up a good amount of space. Here we go. Oh man, there's all this like white sweat coming out of them. I guess they're just, you know, working really hard at trying to kill me. Oh, it's a POW. Also an SMK game. <laughs> Lame shot. You're fired. Looks like my rock has a crush on you. I'm gonna kill this plane before I jump in the tank. It's actually a lot easier to kill the helicopter uh, on foot. No, oh, that's why you shouldn't leave explosives laying around. OSHA violation. Oh, this game is so great. <laughs> oh, shoot. So much for the world record. Get over here. Oh, I see it has all the uh, built-in slow-mo as well. No problem. Well, so there you have it. The Neo Geo Mini is now even more mini and portable. Personally, this is what I would have preferred in the first place. I know they had that Neo Geo Gold a few years ago. I always heard that wasn't so great. But yeah, it was fun taking the mini arcade system that I bought off Amazon, hacking it up to make a cool little portable. So yeah, let me know what you thought of this project in the comments below and if I should do other cool YouTube videos like this on my own personal channel. All right, well, I guess we'll see you next time.